That's our primary work is NALA. Uh, just by way of background, uh, I've been involved in Canada with the whole Indian residential school issue. And when we reflect back on that experience, um, we remember that 150,000 kids were taken away from their homes and their families and their cultures and deprived of speaking their languages, were undernourished, never parentally cared for in a good way, never felt loved, and they were disjointed and dislocated from their, from their natural environment. That caused um, generations of trauma for Aboriginal people in Canada. And as a result of that, those impacts were horrendous. Uh, people uh, lived as broken spirits. They lived with total dysfunction, uh, addictions, violence, uh, all of those things that manifest when one is so de dehumanized and devalued. We began to live that and we began to grow up in our own time and pass it on to our own children. So there's no escaping that we understand what it's like to be totally oppressed uh, physically, mentally, spiritually. And because of that experience now, and because of our desire to move beyond that pain, uh, we think that we have to have a dialogue with other people who created that, whose policies and intentions, while they may not have been the very first intention to destroy us, it actually did that to a great degree. So we come with the experience, as we have in Canada, of having uh, wrestled with the residential school legacy, the fallout of it. And we've uh, we negotiated agreements with the federal government and the churches who were primary responsible, responsible uh, and so there are reparations in there. There's an apology by the prime minister. There's a common experience payment that's made for loss of language and, and parental family care and that kind of stuff. There's a healing foundation that was established to help us to begin to rebuild our communities. And there's a commemoration part. And then finally, a truth commission. Canada has a truth commission. And it's uh, this instrument that we're calling the truth commission is gonna be the instrument that allows us to call all Canadians, all of the parties who were part of the residential school issue to come together in a dialogue unlike any we've ever seen before to talk about uh, the future. That's what's really important. We know that we can't change what's happened in the past, but we've got to find some way to have that acknowledged and respected and agree together that we have more in common than we have anything else. And that our future, that the, the well-being of our children and your children and other children rests with the kind of relationships we're going to build between each other. So how better can we build a society that will be very mutual and respectful in spite or in spite of color, race, creed, whatever. And, and that's the whole goal behind, I think, uh, what we want to bring to the new consciousness that's needed around the globe about oppression. And, and we still hear about that conflict everywhere. Somewhere, somehow, uh, all people have to join this uh, discussion around stopping that harm. And Aboriginal people have a great role to play, not only from their thousands of years of history, the culture they were born in and the things that they uh, developed as, as principles and values and spiritual as, uh, we can bring that as well as with our very individual personal experience about individual harm and collective harm, like losing languages and other things. So uh, while it sounds horrible, this is a, a great time or can be of optimism, but when we start the real discussion, that's gonna create the kind of world we all desire.